Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the U.S. And this is probably the last episode of Gundam Breaker 4 for now. Um, I just don't have any other ideas for Gunpla at the moment, and this is probably the last story chapter, so we're just gonna go with that. Okay, bat new battle mission, Riders in the Skies. I'll take a... Okay, so we may get uh, uh, one last episode of that. I don't know. But uh, for now, we will, you know, we will stick to uh, finishing off the story. And, you know, if I come up with a really clever idea for a new Gunpla, or if they uh, update the game further, we'll go from there. But for now, like I said, just going to finish the story, which, okay, we are just uh, going right into it. No, uh, no preamble. That's interesting. So let's see what we've got. Boy, I put a gunmetal finish on that MMP-80, but I might have overdone it a little bit. Um, kind of looks like it's made out of, up, out of rolled up screen door. Not what I was going for. Oh, well, I'm not going to be using it very often anyway, because, you know, I, I, why use that when I can hit things with my level 40 something, level 47 melee attack. All right, let's see what's going on. We've almost reached the deepest level. We are fighting. If Karamatsu is correct, Lillian should be just ahead. Fighting. Oh, we're fighting. I think, is that one of the Gundam F90s? It might be. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. I think it's the base uh, F90. Uh, they are actually... I'm not sure if they've finished it yet or not, but I believe they are in the process of doing a full, like, A to Z set of accessory packs for it. So a full 26 separate configurations you can buy for the Master Grade Gundam F90, which is kind of ridiculous, but... At least it's ridiculous in a fun way, you know. If, if you have the collect them all bug, my, my sympathies. I've been there trying to get over it. Not easy. But, yeah, I, I, you know, just a whole bunch of different accessory packs just definitely appeals to my uh, childhood self. I'm happy that there are accessory packs and, you know, for Gunpla and such being, you know, one of the... Uh, oh, yeah, here's the F90S, speaking of. Uh, you know, Gunpla being one of the major uh, examples of that, because they make all kinds of, like, you know, accessories, uh, you know, weapon packs, vehicles, upgrades uh, for Gunpla, and that's great, because there was a long period there where accessory packs kind of fell out of uh, vogue. Like, the original notion for, I know Gunpla aren't action figures, but I'm an action figure and Gunpla guy, so it's just going to have to be like this. Um, the original notion for action figures back with the original G.I. Joe in 1964 was based on was based on Barbie. The, the original G.I. Joe were like foot tall, basically Barbie dolls uh, uh, with guns. So the idea and the idea behind that is first you sell them the razor, which is, you know, the doll. And then you sell them the razor blades, which are the accessory packs and outfits and what have you. And, you know, so, you know, G.I. Joe took that concept and did, you know, action figures, very poseable dolls of soldiers and uh, as, and sailors and marines and pilots, etc. And made, like, packs of uniforms and guns and things you could get to go with them. But, and, you know, into the 80s, there were frequently accessory packs for uh, various uh, figures. And there we go. But they they just kind of fell out of style after a while because it's its own price point. You have to convince stores to carry it and what have you. And just, you know, the, wor the world changed. The market changed. So it was not as common a thing. Luckily, Gunpla and plastic models in general are uh, their own separate market. So, you know, it's a little bit easier to get upgrade kits through, I think. I still do, I, you know, have started seeing some for action figures again every so often. It's still not super common, but, you know, the, a lot of the, like, collector brands online, like, you know, stuff like uh, Boss Fight Studios, people like that, will uh, do accessory packs. You can, you can, I'm pretty sure there have been accessory packs for a lot of the uh, various other Japanese figure lines, things like that. So, yeah, happy to see that come back. I, I like that. I still haven't put together my uh, Demi Trainer, but I did get the accessory pack for that when it was like five bucks on Surga. But yeah, it, you know, just like 
I, I guess I've always just kind of been into customizing things to a certain degree. I know I was definitely one of those kids who, like I was saying last time, that took my uh, toys apart. My, uh, my brother was even more so. And the thing about that, of course, is you get them apart, but you may not get them back together. Like, you know, my, there was a, there was a knockoff version of the Zoid Gojulus when my brother and I were kids. And my dad got us uh, one for Christmas one year and painstakingly put it together. And we kind of just took it apart and I'm not sure we ever got it back together in the right order. But, because that is a very complex uh, model kit. Wouldn't mind having another one one day, but, uh. Yeah, it, uh, just, you know, my original G1 Ultra Magnus, the, uh, like, Optimus Prime cab, I took apart and never got back together, so it's just a pair of legs on a torso. Um, and, yeah, just so, it, I'm, I don't, I, I never had the patience for, like, traditional model kits. Gotta remember how to do that flurry, because that's a fantastic move. But yeah, ne I never, like, traditional paint and glue model kits. I'm still not good at painting. Part of that's shaky hands. Part of that's a lack of patience and ex and experience, which kind of help to reinforce one another. Let's be real. But the... How do I... Uh, you know, I uh, snap together kits that I can then do a little spot painting and customizing on. That I, I love. I tried, you know, I tried to do a full paint job on... My first Master Grade, which was the Master Grade Char's Gelgoog, which I think I mentioned before I saw in Hobby Japan once upon a time and thought was just one of the coolest looking things I uh, ever saw. Hobby Japan had really good photographers. You know, it, it is amazing sometimes what a good photographer can do for a toy or a model kit or uh, any of those things. Okay, so yeah, this really is just kind of a boss rush. But yeah. It was, uh, yeah, I, you know, I just, part of it is that I feel like I would have need, needed to uh, really have an airbrush to make that Gilgood work. I did not have an airbrush. I do not have an airbrush. So, just, but yeah, by the time I was done painting the uh, uh, interior parts, I actually could not get them uh, closed against one another anymore. So, yeah, I just, you know, I was new at it. I might be able to do better now. I honestly can't guarantee it, especially with shaky hands. But just, yeah. You know, the the fact that uh, Gunpla have gotten simpler, you know, or they've gotten more elaborate, but in a way that makes it easier on uh, the person putting it together, I think is the best way to put it. But yeah, that, that definitely has helped my enjoyment over the years. Hey, Gunsaber Zeta, that's a new one. And, but... Yeah, man, I am just in full-on ramble mode tonight, but it's, you know, I've been doing these a little bit later at night just to, uh, uh, just because I've been getting GBO2 stuff done first, so, yeah, brain's a little more gone than usual, only a little, though, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, just stream of consciousness all the way down. Well, if it is, I'm actually, or was actually, I haven't done it in a while. I used to be a really good, uh, really good written toy reviewer who was way more focused than anything I've done any time lately. But just uh, honestly, you know, the okay got stuck amongst the gunpla boxes, did you? Uh, but okay, that's wave two clear. Double S, that's good. Okay, we're actually moving areas. I guess this will probably be the big fight with whatever is guarding Lillen. Yeah, it just got to be, you know, the the amount of work for what I was getting paid for it was not worth it. I, I and I just kind of had to give it up because I was burned out. Also, the uh, the person I was uh, the the site I was doing reviews for was wanting more video content and they wanted it fast and. Yeah, I've figured out ways to do fast content al along my lines, but just the the way you know to do a review, I wasn't uh, I wouldn't totally cringe at by uh, when I looked at it. I couldn't do it fast, so you know, or in a way that I felt like was useful and concise enough. Like I said, my, my friend uh, Chris and I, we did like the 
one of the very few uh, English language uh, review sites for MS in action in the early 2000s. And I kind of, you know, I developed the process there, we, uh, the both of us did, and just, yeah, doing reviews while trying to live up to that process and do the news posting on the site we were working for and all that other stuff together. It was just too much. But, you know, while I was doing it, I enjoyed it. I got, uh, I did get some decent video reviews done. I got to do a uh, retrospective on Fisher Price of Little People that uh, uh, Toy News International actually ran at their booth for uh, SDCC uh, a few years ago. God, probably more like five or six now. But yeah, it uh, you know, it was definitely interesting work. I don't, you know, I enjoyed it to a certain extent uh, until I burned out, but I burned out. It is... It is easy to burn out on stuff, you know. Uh, you know, I've seen people, you know, re re uh, re you know, alter the saying, do something you love and you'll never uh, 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 work a day in your life to re do something you love and even your recreation starts to feel like work. And, yeah, yeah, long, uh, you know, enough enough time in the toy review uh, minds and that was definitely becoming true, so... I, I will be honest and say that it is very important and cathartic to me at this point to have games to play that I have no intention of covering on the channel at all. You know. Ah, it, I think it's important even if you, you know, get, you know, a pretty nice uh, arrangement where you get to do, you know, something you pretty much enjoy for, uh, you know, for work. It's still very important to be able to have the opportunity to do something that's just for you. Because, yeah. Uh, that does help stave off the burnout very much, you know, just like the you know, the Dark Souls and Elden uh, uh, Ring, you know, just the Souls-like kick I've been on this year. You know, I don't see myself ever being good enough or interesting enough at those games to justify posting anything for them, and that's fine. Because I don't have to be, I just have to blunder my way through and enjoy doing it, so. And I do. I'm, there's been rumors going around we may get a remaster of Dark Souls 3. I'll probably get it if we do, but at this point in video gaming, a uh, remaster just basically means ported to the current gen. There, there's really nothing more artful about it than that most of the time. Maybe a few little user interface tweaks, but that said, you know, uh interesting thing happened sort of tangentially related. Um, I did a video of the Xeonic Front uh, situation battle for Gundam Battle Operation 2 on, I think it was Sunday it went up, and that, just by having Xeonic Front in the title, wound up getting like double the views of uh, video on the videos of either side of it. There is still a lot of demand for that game. And... That is one that I feel like would be a great candidate for a genuine remaster, a, a user interface overhaul, and, you know, uh, modernization of the graphics. I think, you know, given the kind of response that talking about Xeonic Front still gets, I think that could be, that could be, you know, worth doing to Bandai Namco at some point, just because, yeah, people still love that game. I was never good at it. I didn't get very far because probably told the story before too I, I tell it's a family trait to just tell stories to death I'll just tell you that um, but uh, yeah I never uh, finished the Onic front because my brother we only had one memory card for the PlayStation 2 at that point and my brother used a game chart to unlock everything and it was one of the first games I ever played with, like, a master system file where, like, uh, you know, whatever you unlocked affected every save file on that card. So, yeah, I, I went in and, you know, everything was unlocked and maxed out and what have you. And it's uh, just like, now I don't know that it would bother me as much, I, but at the time it just felt like, well, this isn't right. So, you know, beyond the fact that I was having trouble with the game and I... I found the, you know, team routing thing, which is basically, the, you know, the core of the game, the bread and butter, 
I found it a little tedious and difficult to understand and never really spent enough time with it to overcome that. So, you know, it's a, it is, you know, like I said, it's a well-remembered game. It's a very interesting game. There's not a lot of other things I know of that are like it, but I bounced off of it pretty hard. Likewise, Encounters in Space, that was not a, that was not a question so much of, I don't get it. It's a, that was, oh God, all these escort missions. I hate them. Because, yeah, I've never, I've never really liked escort missions. I've gotten better at them over the years, but I think they've also gotten less hard over the years, if I'm, if I'm being fair. But, yeah, just... Yeah, so those were two pretty well-regarded Gundam games I bounced off of pretty hard. Uh, you know, the Versus games were definitely my more my speed at the time. Uh, Journey to Jabro I liked quite a bit at the time. I have a feeling that if I tried to go back to it, it would feel really awkward with the kind of advances that have been made in action games uh, uh, since then. You know, I that's some, I feel like that is like the big thing that, is, that it's not the graphics that, you know, that primitive graphics I don't think are why people sometimes have trouble, get, get trouble getting into older games. It's the fact that we have come so far in just, you know, user interfaces, accessibility, you know, all those things. You know, just been thinking about that a lot playing Dragon Quest Three because it, the original Dragon Quest Three was already was already streamlined over uh, Dragon Quest One and Two in terms of its uh, user interface on the NES. And yeah, this new one definitely just takes a lot of the pain and awkwardness out of playing uh, that game. So yeah, just you know, it is sometimes very hard to go back to older games that have not you know, really, uh, you know, aged well in terms of the interface, because you're, especially in an RPG where you're going to spend most of your life in that interface, it gets to be really tedious, especially with, uh, you know, Dragon, uh, with the early Dragon Quests where uh, one of the interface things is you only have about 10 inventory slots per character. Your current equipment goes into that. They are not counted separately. So you really do, uh, you really do have to uh, manage items very, very carefully. There is, I think, three hit added the item bag, so you had like you know some storage, but of course you couldn't get a hold of any of that in battle once you did that. So, but yeah, so and uh, all of the remakes of three from the Super Famicom on forward have had a command to you know, ma uh, mass move items from in character inventories to bags. And yeah, without that on the NES, you were moving one thing at a time. You were buying, you know, 10 medical herbs at a time, moving two here and two here, one at a time. Like the item, use, transfer, uh, examine, discard, something along those lines. Must be it. Yeah, so just... Good user interfaces are where it's at. They, they can make or break a game. And again, that is where a game shows its age the most, in my opinion. Okay, so we have to go get to the tune and try and save Lillen. And we're about to fight a very large boss, I'm betting. Okay. Not sure what that's supposed to mean. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lynn, because I have no idea. Oh, it means you're being watched. Okay. Okay, so the uh, so we're transmitting more data to, uh, to Lillen. I think it's more likely her defense system. Okay, yep. A threat. Well, time to go into the firewall and make some exceptions. Which means you should be expecting company any second now. What are we fighting? We could be okay. We, yep, we are fighting. Uh, we are fighting this uh, dark Gundam variant again. Oh yeah. In case you don't play Gundam Battle Operation uh, 2 on Steam or haven't in a while, Burning Gundam, by the time you watch this, should be out uh, out and in uh, the Steam version of GBO2. Uh, meanwhile, in uh, the PlayStation Network version, we are getting the uh, Virulent Custom Unit 2, which is a support that can uh, fire while boosting in the air. So that, uh, that has some potential. I'm, I'm kind of glad we're pushing the limits of the support class finally. But yeah, there's there's a uh, there's 
you know, it looks like some interesting stuff coming, so looking forward to that. Okay, there's a lot to do here. Let's awaken. Go trans -am and start doling out damage. And heal my uh, teammates, because I'm here, they're here. Oh. And mild out, not much. Theoretical out is much. Already mostly through the first bar, that's pretty good. Do as I go by. And between the lobster claws, hopefully, there's a bunch of circles to hit. I think I, yeah, I got the leg one. The, but it is not down. I'm sure you have to uh, break a lot of those. Oh, that's a new move. All spinning is, as we know, a good trick. So, ow. 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 Yep, I'm just going to be stubborn, mostly. Crashing into this thing face first until I've got it down. At least it does seem to re uh, retarget a a more eligible piece. Like every time you break something down to the wireframe, that's good. Oops, one, two. I caught that just in time. It didn't do much, but at least it wasn't. Uh, at least it didn't go unused. So more Trans Am, please. Oh, interesting. I am. I can't do the. Uh, I can't do the uh, first uh, breaker again, but I am in, like, permanent awakening mode. Or was. Or I guess it was lasted until the uh, until that attack animation was over. Interesting. Okay, we have gotten it down. Interesting. It, I, okay, it's five life bars left. It's already developed a barrier. I just have a feeling we're going to end up uh, having to... Uh, Break two of them. Up, oh, it is in it is in noggin mode. Like, it was hard to find, uh, but there was uh, an MS in action of uh, there was the main you know uh, lobster uh, space lobster of death uh, devil Gundam which this is largely based on, but also they did the version I think it was its final form that turns into a giant Gundam head. They did make one of those uh, in the in the G Gundam uh, MS in action line. I have it. It's a nice figure, and the thing that always kind of amused me about it is, I mentioned earlier that there were there were standard and deluxe edition MS in action in the U.S. market. Standard, I think, were like eight or nine dollars, and the uh, deluxe were like ten to twelve. This was, of course, twenty. But the thing is, you know, as I described in the uh, Jim Sniper video I posted the other day, um, the difference between the standard Jim Sniper and the, you know, really fancy one was just basically the addition of a jet core booster. Otherwise, it was more or less, you know, the same amount, the same amount of mass, same amount of accessories. Well, the the Final Form Dark Gundam, of course. You know, is a giant thing. It uses more or less the same torso as the Space uh, Lobster version. And it has these giant legs that fold up into a Gundam head. And they got that thing on a deluxe card somehow. Like, that was like a $10, $12 toy uh, brand new. It did not go... You know, there were also larger packages, like the, you know, the Space Lobster one was, like, I want to say 20 25 bucks, maybe a little more. Uh... uh Raven Gundam, Walter Gundam, all the all the uh, components of Grand Master Gundam also fell into those larger boxed figure uh, categories, just like the Mobile Armors did for First Gundam. Uh, we got a big grown as a Crello in that price point or, uh, at the time, along with the uh, Gun Parry and the Gallop. I never got the Gun Parry. I need to see. But uh, yeah, but in terms of carded figures, the the Dark Gundam. I'm pretty sure that weighed over a pound. That thing was massive for the for the price they were selling it at. You know, which is probably why it was rare. I'm sure it was short uh, packed to hell and back, just because that is a lot of plastic to be giving out. You know, that would be. I want to say uh, in the current market, you know, in the current market, probably the basic MS in action would probably be about twenty. The deluxe would be twenty-five or thirty. 
and I'm betting that, you know, Dark Gundam would have to be 50. It, it was just that big. But then there was, uh, ah, then there was the time that uh, Diamond Comics took over MS and Action uh, distribution at the very end of the line. And I think the Elmeth cost me maybe $50, which it's huge. It has electronics for any toy at this point. That, that would be a steal. For the secondary price uh, market uh, on the Elmeth, that is a steal. But also extended MS in action, like Shars Gelgug, things like that, just the tail end of that. Like the Strike Noir, the, uh, the Strike Noir, the uh, Wing Gundam Zero Custom, uh, all those later and Shars Gelgug, all those later extended MS in action, which were really, really good figures. They all were $13 each, which even at the time was insanely good. I miss, you know, I miss being able to pay prices like that. But what I did for about the same price do pretty well for myself uh, on Surugaya here. I got uh, the Diecast Creative Zaku, which is, uh, it's a spin-off special creative model, which is... Like Ben Presto, Crane Prize is not quite the uh, same size. They're bigger than MS in action. Quality might be a little lower, but they are just, you know, they're pretty good figures for what they are. And yeah, this one has die cast feet, thighs, and a torso, upper torso. I got it for 10 bucks. Really nice and poseable. Really nicely made. Um, just, you know, really uh, great for what it is. And. Yeah, that special creative model stuff is pretty good. You know, I haven't gotten any of the, like, very stylized EX ones. I, I, you know, they're not quite my thing a lot of the time. Like, I don't know, I feel like just, like, super stylized executions are something that work better for super robots than mobile suits. That's just me. But, can I finish it? I can get real close. Okay, let's just keep shooting at it until it's down. Or... I can do that a couple more times. Perfect. Oops. Dropped his weak point. That's okay. Keep spinning. Go right ahead. There we go. Let's see what happens. Wave 5 is clear. And let's see what this looks like. Mm, I'm betting no. Where is Lilith, please? Uh-oh. Yep. Increased energy readings. That's always a good sign. You know, it's funny. Um... It's been forever since I... Oh! I'm going to have to fight my evil twin. Kind of wish that one would be in US Agent Colors, but the game has no way of doing that. Um, but... I totally lost my train of thought. Interesting. Okay. Well, we'll be fighting uh, myself in Awaken mode here. Yep, never, whatever story I was about to tell, I apologize. I totally, it totally, you know, I actually am having to focus on what's going on, so. Brain's empty now. See what we can do. Alright. Be nice if I hadn't just wasted my away, well, not wasted, but spent my away. Oh, yeah, it has the hammer too. I think. Yeah, I think I'm going to save my EX gauge for uh, heals, because if it also hits uh, hits things uh, as hard as uh, I do, we're going to have a problem. Luckily, it doesn't seem to be as, inter as interested in uh, spamming the Adzam leaders as I am. So. All right, now we'll do trans because I've got some healing stocked up if I need. Does anything? Am I a program or a person? How would I know? How do they? Yeah, like we are, uh, you know. How can I tell? Existential questions are kind of, uh... Okay, yeah, so... Lillen, you'll have to snap out of it. You said it yourself. You're just a stupid 
Look, what sentience and intelligence mean is something we're still trying to work out, Lillian, so don't feel bad if you're having trouble with it. So what? Won't get through to her while she's in this state. But your actions matter. Fight to free her limbs. You there we go. I will. I'm not giving up. Oh, I've almost got me. Yeah, if I was if I was as uh, interested in using the ads and leaders as I am, I, this would be harder. Oh. How do we fight this thing? Oh, I got it down to Okay, it's going to get a re refilled health bar, isn't it? Okay. We need to weaken it somehow. I'm open to suggestions. I'm thinking. Come on, come on. There's got to be something. She can't reconcile her old commands with her new self, right? And her original commands were set by Aura, who was designed to adapt to the player's emotions. So if we could find a way to change Aura's plan for Lillian. Right, I've got it. Yeah, you should be able to do Tell me you've got a plan, Jin. Broadcast this fight to the whole game. I mean, everyone. Easy. I'm on it. Meister, what are you planning? Hey, but is Meister Jin going to be uh, uh, going to be uh, you know the Mister Satan here and get everybody to think happy thoughts and, and uh, support us? But she's influenced by player emotion. If she sees enough support for Lillian, she'll react. That's ridiculous. Okay, I patched you through. Oh, I'm glad I did bring a pretty good build to this, because, yeah. Hello, GB4 players and viewers. Can you hear me? Listen to me. The battle you're watching now is live. You may have heard the rumors that a small group of elite players and I saved GB4 from being destroyed. Well, this is them. Ooh, corporate's not going to like that. Heroes who helped save the game was the girl, Lily. But she's in trouble. We're all here trying to help her. If we don't win this fight, she'll be banned from GB4 forever. We need your support to make sure that doesn't happen. Please, cheer us on to victory. What a fantastic battle! Is this a new high stakes format? How gripping! I can't look away! All I can do is watch. really does sense our emotions then i will host with all my gunpla heart i don't think i can keep this up my tank was scrapped i mean i we depleted its life bar just hang on a little longer almost as a life bar it can be destroyed There we go. It's working. It is, but it's not enough. We still need one last push. Oh, let's see what we can do. Everyone, concentrate. Focus on your desire to save Lillin. I, think, I Lillin, think that'll be a problem. Do you hear us? Listen to me. Everyone out here cares about you. You don't need to go, Lillin. We want you here with us. Here we go. All right, so is there another fight, or is this the end? It's tough. There'll be cutscenes for sure, so. And all of the players out there watching this stream. Together, we're tipping the scales of Lillian's internal struggle. We're almost through. Speak to her. Let her know how you feel. I can't speak. I'm the protagonist. We're all waiting for you to come home. We share a bond. I wish to fight by your side again, my friend. Come back. 
Oh, but I do get ma uh, magical sparklers. Sure things might have gotten a little crazy at times, but I wouldn't trade those memories even for a hundred. Okay, am I gonna just burst break the uh, cocoon here? I'm stabbing myself. Okay. Well, you know. And there she is. You hello. Don't do that, you jerk. You just scared me. Now come on. Let's get you out of here. I'll look you before it's waiting to meet you. Okay. All right, wave six clear. Pretty sure that's going to be mission complete. Then I'm sure we'll get a final cut. Okay, not bad. One A and a bunch of S's. We're ending on a decently long mission here. Hey, look at that score. Bow barrel beam cannon. Gun saber Zeta. And. Almost, but not quite, to Builder's Rank 51. Okay, didn't have a Master Grade New Gundam Beam Saber before. Down Dock Saber. Beam Saber? Well, it's a great sword. I'm not sure whose it is, but it is definitely a great sword. More melee parts of various flavors. Um, an unfortunately named weapon called the Screw Web, which... Yeah... Probably, I'm betting from where it's placed it goes to one of the uh, F90 variants. Long range weapons are definitely weapons. Shot lancers, beam rifles, a peacock smasher, F90 beam rifles. Okay. A bunch of good uh, F90 parts. That's good. I'm pretty sure that's one of the new ones for this DLC. So, and let's take a look at uh, ability uh, modules here and get rid of everything I don't want. That, that, and that are useful. That has way too many downsides for a little bit of attack power at low health. That's possibly justifiable. I'll leave it. Um, I don't use shooting mode. That's uh, acceptable. No, definitely not. I mean, if you got to a point where, like, I just want to play through this and want to get fewer uh, items, yeah. Just because I'm sick of selling the things, I could see that as being useful. But as man, does selling all this take a while after a while? Yeah, I feel like this really kind of needs an ability cartridge uh, melding feature, kind of like the charms in Monster Hunter. But let's see what what we get from here. Okay, back everybody. Okay. Welcome home, Put auto. On. As usual, no headphones. We were pretty worried for a while there. I think the voice acting in this has been pretty decent, though. The, the guy who played Chaos in particular was, uh, you know, pretty of course not, spectacular. Kid. Just wish you'd talk to us about it, is all. We're all just happy to finally have you back, Lillian. So, did you find a way to resolve your problem? Um, you know. Oh, great. I'm not sure anybody ever really finds a way to solve their uh, existentialist problems, but you know, best uh, best of luck to everyone. An internal conflict. Her original reason for existing no longer matched her new self. Normally, once a data collection AI like Lillen finishes its task, it's absorbed back into the mother system. Well, none of them up to now were self-aware, okay? 
They just she was exist. forcibly separated from Aura thanks to chaos. She's no longer like the other AI of her kind. Aura's creations are normally more like her hands or her eyes and ears. They're still a part of her. But thanks to all the player feedback, Aura recognizes that Lilin is different. Hey, good. So she has agreed to make a new role just for her. From now on, Lilin can live independently in the game world for as long as she wants. She Very good. Her own person. Does that mean I can stay here with everyone? Yes, if that's what you wish. Oh, that's great! So it all worked out then! We're all so happy to have you back with us, Lilin. Don't you doubt that for a second. You will always be a dear friend to us. Nothing can change that. This place wouldn't be the same without you. And now, we can visit you whenever we want. Yeah, that, that, that build really did work out pretty well. I would like that very much. Thank you, my friends. All right. And okay, so I guess we're getting the credits again, which means this is going to be where I uh, control the sound, having uh, uh, found out last time the hard way that, uh, yeah, having the uh, song in the background is a no no. The. Uh, Luckily, through my recording method, I can I can ditch the game sound through here without affecting anything. OBS really is pretty great. You can set up multi-track multi recording very, very easily. So, but I think since we have already set through the credits once, I'm going to skip this if I can. I can't. So, okay, that's fair. No. People worked really hard on this game. Let's, you know, let's uh, see who they are. I've all, Like I've said before, I think, I, I think I have anyway, I've always been a credits reader. People were talking about that the other day and just, you know, uh, what was the first anime you ever saw? For me, it was uh, uh, Transor Z, uh, a.k.a. Mazinger Z. There was a, uh, there was a uh, dub of it in the early... Uh, uh, 80s called Transfer Z. Uh, Greg Berger, the voice of, among many other things, uh, Grimlock in Transformers G1, played the main character whose name was changed from Koji Kabuto to Tommy Davis. And yeah, it was, it was a good show. And I think when I was reading the credits, I noticed that that and Transformers were both done by a company called Toei Animation, who, of course, you know, we know pretty well at this point. So yeah, that's when I started uh, I started trying to find things out about you know just things about animation companies and you know think that I think that's more or less how I uh, uh, wound up with uh, you know figuring out what anime was you know before the internet before there was a lot of it available that was not always easy knowledge to come by. Okay, yeah, we're getting some of the new portraits created for the DLC in here, so. And that is fine. But yeah, well, like I said, I really uh, have enjoyed this game. I believe, I'm hoping it's still in stock. The, the like, collector's edition that, came, that comes with a, the uh, entry-grade Gun Barrel Strike Gundam, that kind of sold out, like, while the game, like, within a week of the game being announced. But in terms of like the everyday, uh, like physical version, the, the like day one version, I think is probably what's still out there. It comes with a few extra pieces of, uh, like builders parts and things, uh, that has been showing up in various black Friday sales online for half price, $30. Personally, 
my opinion, even without the DLC, this game is a steal at $30. There is plenty to do. Um, and yeah, it is, you know, if you're on, if you're watching part 55 of this playthrough, you probably figured out that it's a really good game or you, you know, you figured out for sure whether or not you want it. But if the only game you ever uh, tried in the series was new Gundam breaker, you will like this more. You, you will almost definitely like this more. So just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, it is showing up on sale for the holidays about now for, I think, twenty nine ninety nine US a lot of places. So absolutely worth that if you can get your hands on it. So. Man, I still I still remember how many people uh, said they wound up buying G Generation Genesis because of me. One day, maybe I'll finish that if I'm lucky. But yeah, still having the doze off in chair because I uh, find the game chill and comfort and comfortable uh, problem. So don't know if it'll be soon. I haven't been having the nod off problem as much, but it still comes and goes. I don't know, you know, what of my various problems that is a side effect of, but really kind of, uh, you know, since I've got the, uh, got the, uh, deteriorating vertebrae in my neck, it's, you know, just nodding off and like whipping my head back suddenly when I uh, realize it and wake up, not good for me. I was thinking about it today because I woke up and pretty much nothing hurt, which it's been a couple of days because I ha was having various spine pains and what have you. And it's like, OK, so if especially if you're uh, younger than me and you have times when nothing hurts and that's normal for you, just take a second sometime. Just take a, a second to yourself. Take a deep breath and, and, and you know, just let that feeling sink in because you know, you're gonna, there, everybody, you know, everything put together falls apart. You know, uh, nobody, nobody is going to go through their whole life in perfect health and full and full function. You know, that, that may sound depressing, but it's just kind of how things are. So yeah, just keep that, you know, hold that feeling of everything just being all right when you can find it, because, you know, there, there will come a time sooner or later, hopefully later that, that, yeah, you will, you know, you will miss that and you want, and you will want to, you know, be conscious of when you get as close to it as you can. So just old person stuff, hopefully, you know, nothing, nobody, uh, uh, nothing, anybody out there actually has to think about, but it is, you know, a thing. Okay. Recording is resumed. Like I said, that, uh, that audio is going to have to get, uh, cut, but. During my time in GB4, I learned much and I struggled often. And I still don't know what Who I've does? become. But I have come to believe that these struggles and uncertainties are part of being alive. They are what make me, me. Okay. It can be frightening to not know one's purpose. But in the end, I know I'll be okay. I have friends, a family, and a world to share with all of them. For now, all right. I think that is That's enough. not bad. Is that it? Well, it's just saved, so. Okay, just right back to the title screen. I'm going to jump back in for a second and see if there's any new emails or anything unlocked for finishing that or whatever. And after that, we will call it. But, yeah, it's not bad. To be honest, I, I feel like, given that there are only 11 stages across the five DLCs, that probably could have been two or three DLCs, you know, ideally, but there's a bunch of new parts at least, and that's good. So, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but okay. I am now the hero of GB4. Neat. All right. So yeah. Well, let me check. This. I just want to check the store for one thing, see if any new builders parts have been added that I've missed. So, because as you've seen, they do make builds you know, more interesting and more flexible. A uh, couple, yeah. Some mega beam cannons that I do not actually recognize the design of. Anything else? No, but new options are new options, so Thank I'll take them. Much. Any new? Nope. Okay. But yeah, so for the time being, that is Gundam Breaker 4. I really enjoyed it. I hope everybody did too. 
happy to have the whole game up here on on, on the channel. And yeah, you know, like I said, I, I strongly feel that it is worth a pickup if you uh, if you like customizing and you know, uh, you know, making weird custom stuff like. You know, making Captain America out of a bunch of robot parts or whatever, you know, may strike your fancy. If I think of anything else in the future, if I get any requests for uh, uh, Gundam Breaker 4 builds, I will uh, I will see what I, uh, I can do. But for now, that is going to do it for Gundam Breaker 4. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching. There will continue to be... Uh, uh, you know, Gun and Battle Operation 2 and whatever else I feel like uh, on the channel. So thanks for watching, and until next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later!